application one can think of is manipulating an order, an order document uh, manually by hand and a uh, picture is worth a thousand words so uh, this is uh, an order UI so you have the order page here and some simple properties are uh, visualized in a, in a form uh, in a two column layout as one would expect and down there there is a table and the table visualized uh, the order positions which are uh, connected to the order and here down there is a safe close and safe button so that obviously stores uh, that order in the database and uh, well there is submenu so as one would expect uh, if you double click such a order position line you got an editor a user can change uh, those simple properties and by pressing OK he can apply the changes and of course uh, escape will uh, cancel the editor so our domain is editing documents editing documents uh, comes with uh, modeling the user interface, modeling data structures, and modeling um, business logic. So first things first, data structure, not too complicated. In our example here, it's just the order head, what translates nicely to German to Belegskopf. <laughs> and uh, there are the order positions. And uh, if we just have a look at how that would look in Java, so order has some simple properties and uh, order position, uh, which is a which is uh, modeled as a collection right inside the order. So in Java, that's just the properties and list of order positions in the order. But what we can observe here already is some um, boilerplate, boilerplate code is pouring in. So getters and setters, quite annoying in, in Java. And what I do not show here is uh, infrastructure code right in those classes like annotation, which, which are necessary in Hibernate. And why not keep uh, things simple? So this is our order entity. It just has a couple of properties. It comes with a type, uh, a name, a short and long description. Those are default labels, uh, a format if, if need be, uh, options like key range, and additionally some documentation. And it's really pretty similar to a Java class. doesn't need much explanation, I guess. And uh, even down there, you can uh, write some uh, Java code in. So what's really most important to us here is uh, no boilerplate code, um, no infrastructure related code, uh, just uh, keep it simple and, and stupid. So uh, after you defined your data structure, if you're in domain of editing documents, you uh, have to retrieve and, and, and save those documents in the database somehow. So persistence is a key topic and uh, we, can, we came up with two terms, check in, and check out. So the check checkout means um, just um, get some data from a database table, probably by ID, and load that data into into the entity. And uh, like we've seen, an order and order position assemble a graph by by uh, just attaching those order positions to the order object. And conversely, check in means save uh, save the uh, entity, save all entities to the database. So if entity is dirty, save it. If the entity is new, use insert, else use update. And uh, as said, table and uh, entities are two important words. So we connected them with the persistence description. Uh, there are two descriptions for order and the order position entities here. And again, pretty straightforward. You just map uh, entity uh, to uh, table and uh, each property to a column so nothing fancy here either just straightforward and what's just missing here is the check-in and the check-out itself so that's also quite straightforward we have a model repository here which translates to a java class uh, finally and there are kind of two methods check out just needs an id and uh, it queries the order object by using the map order that's type list type so get just means uh, we are expecting a single object which you query by ID here and map order position is a, a collection a list and we use uh, the MPS internal collection language to get those uh, uh, positions uh, we want attach them straight to the order and uh, return them from those from that map out. and conversely check in very similar we iterate over the positions use a safe operator and uh, with a specific map, save them in the database, and uh, same thing counts for uh, the order object. So that's uh, 
that's uh, um, uh, persistence when it comes to our domain of editing documents you need some uh, visualization like uh, as we've already seen order on top all the simple properties and uh, the order positions in a table uh, that looks like this um, two column layout on top and the table nothing new here but uh, it's amazing how simple that translates to a logical model we have a page pane here and the page pane accepts uh, order and then we have a grid layout with column weights here minus one minimize one star maximize that is tables or two components here the delegate form which uh, visualizes simple properties here are two columns as we've seen and the table down there uh, which uh, needs nothing more than the column width and uh, explicitly the mentioning of the properties of course in practice the the UI is a bit more complicated so we have three components here like uh, order uh, uh, form again the table of order positions and down there those are details of the order position uh, meaning that uh, we have a selected order here uh, order position and all the details of that position are again displayed down there and uh, even in the logical model it's uh, pretty much the same and I'm not sure how the readability is of, of the black but uh, down there we have now three components oh thanks Alex ah that's a lot better three components now and uh, it's just that the delegate form down there is loaded with the selected order position so the table serves uh, two purposes it visualizes the order position but it also provides a selected object for other components to bind on so um, pretty easy I guess what's now missing is just uh, some some concept to glue all our uh, our uh, uh, model artifacts together and that's uh, the command and the command has uh, just the purpose of uh, uh, loading or uh, checking out the document applying some business logic um, switching to a user interface here and uh, as we've seen safe and close applying a business logic again and then checking in the document uh, to the database and uh, as, a, as a graphical representation we can see that uh, a command edit order is provided the command init block is executed first so we're using the order rep repository with its checkout method to to get a hand on the order and uh, on the order graph then a page is provided that means uh, running page init first returning that order to the user interface uh, we've already discussed user interfaces what's interesting to note here there is that we have a safe and close button down there so uh, we model that as a conclusion in the page uh, that is the page is, is also kind of controller for the for the user interface and just states here with done uh, that we should end the command successfully means uh, execute the final okay conclusion and the final okay conclusion in turn checks in uh, the very order with the model repository uh, we've already discussed so um, looking looking that to that artifact in MPS make things even easier uh, there is a command uh, edit order and uh, obviously a command parameter the ID is passed from outside this context there are some command settings we have the command init block here and uh, each each command can have kind of multiple pages that lets you model um, a wizard similar setup but uh, here we just use one page and uh, that page sends uh, the order graph to the user interface uh, down there the user interfaces uh, are mentioned obviously two one for a mobile platform that's kind of a smaller one and uh, the one we've already uh, discussed and the okay conclusion uh, with uh, with the label uh, safe and close and uh, done executing leads to the execution of the final okay block which just checks in the order again so uh, I guess it's really uh, <laughs> really simple to to come up with a command here yeah finally what's uh, what's necessary in our domain is um, choosing a runtime so we are not relying on any third-party tools every aspect of our business application is modeled within MPS so we're just generating Java code from the UI from uh, business logic from entities 
uh, of course, uh, for Oracle uh, description, table descriptions, everything's generated. We also have uh, three runtimes. So the screenshot I've shown is from Java, Java FX, which could be started straight out of MPS. It's really nice, really quick. But we also have uh, a runtime for Vadin uh, GWT, which uh, has an interactive, uh, uh, what's it called, web uh, web interface. So it looks exactly the same like uh, in Java FX, and uh, we've also uh, uh, HTML5 um, uh, runtime for progressive apps, and uh, you're already familiar with the tables, with the forms, pretty much the same, and down there conclusion buttons of the commands and the pages, so I guess that's also straightforward. So uh, what's uh, finally uh, needed in, in our uh, environment is just uh, developers. You need developers to uh, get your app up and running. And uh, we, uh, we already know uh, developers are rare those days and quite expensive, so a single thing you could do is uh, increase productivity, and that's exactly what we are trying here. Increase uh, productivity not by throwing in another fancy framework, but by concentrating on uh, important uh, domain concepts, user interface and, and command and data structures, and uh, also having a clear separation between uh, infrastructure-related code and uh, just uh, plain domain code, how a command and which commands exists. And, uh, well, finally, uh, a focus on uh, Fachlichkeit, the term which is used uh, <laughs> those days very often. And yeah, finally, you need a, a nice uh, uh, workbench and a nice tool set, and that's exactly what MPS is for us. So uh, thanks a lot for coming up with these uh, tools, yeah. Cheers, yeah. Any questions and suggestions? Am I in time, yeah? Two minutes for questions, yeah. Uh, right now, on on the on our uh, with our main customer, there are six developers using the whole two chain. So they are in the field. There are right now uh, five applications, and those uh, applications are used approximately by, uh, well, I guess 400 users, something like that. Yeah. Actually, it is open source, so uh, it's just parked at the GitHub. And uh, there is also a plugin provided, uh, which could be easily downloaded and installed. Um, so uh, yeah, of course uh, we are not we are not actively pushing it out of the door. But if there is some interest, we are very willing to discuss matters. It's quite similar to Workday, isn't it? Just easier. <laughs> 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 Okay, thank you for your attention. <laughs>